There are some places that just can't be owned. International waters, Antarctica, and I was pretty sure that was true of space. And for a long time, it was true, but I've been finding out that that's changing, and fast. What if we looked up at asteroids? Thousands of metal rich asteroids orbiting Earth. Pure heavy metals, platinum, iridium, osmium, gold. And the out of this world industry could be worth over $1 trillion. Now we're chasing asteroids to mine for minerals. Sounds a bit like science fiction, doesn't it? And the mad thing is, is that one of the main countries at the forefront of this space gold rush, alongside the US, Russia, and China, is Luxembourg, one of the world's smallest countries which, less than 10 years ago, didn't even have a space agency, but is now the international hub for everything to do with commercialising mineral resources in space. How is this tiny nation winning in the race to privatise space mining? On the 27th of January, 1967, more than 60 nations at the UN signed the Outer Space Treaty, which has provided the basic framework on international space law ever since. It established far-reaching legal principles, such as outer space is not the subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty, and that space shall be the province of all mankind, which all sounds pretty definitive, but there were some other points in there that were a little bit more ambiguous, such as outer space shall be free for exploration and use by all states, and states shall be responsible for national space activities, whether carried out by governmental or non-governmental entities. And as the cost of space travel has become more financially viable for private companies, the ambiguity of the Outer Space Treaty has been subject to some creative interpretation. The US was the first to exploit this legal ambiguity, passing the American Space Act in 2015, the world's first finders keepers law, recognizing ownership of space resources, though only for companies owned by US citizens. In 2017, Luxembourg followed suit, passing Europe's first space mining law which was even more explicit than the US legislation. It granted all space miners the right to keep what they extract, and it opened the door to companies from anywhere in the world. And they added financial incentives, so with capital, insurance, and political backing on offer, Luxembourg had positioned itself to attract startups from across the world. The ground was set. Now all Luxembourg needed was a space agency. Luxembourg, the place for space development. The Luxembourg Space Agency, established in 2018, is unlike any other space agency in the world. Instead of launching rockets, undertaking research, or conducting missions in space, the sole focus of this agency is on business activities in space and funding investments in space technology startups. The Luxembourg Space Agency's Space Directory lists over 70 different companies involved in various aspects of space technology, including satellite communications, space electronics, and materials research. And the reason that so many companies have flocked to Luxembourg's temple for space commercialization is that this potential is real. Near-Earth asteroids contain valuable concentrated metals, particularly the platinum group metals, essential to much of our fuel cell and green hydrogen technology. As you can see from this online database, ranking over 600,000 asteroids by the potential value of their minerals, the possible profits involved are astronomical. Just one kilogram of rhodium, for example, often reaches values of over $100,000. Another potential resource to be mined is ice, to provide water for the space industry. Water plays a vital role in so many activities in space, and it could be far less expensive to extract it there than to transport it up from Earth. But there have been many false starts in the space mining gold rush, which raises questions around the feasibility of commercial space mining. And yet, the money continues to roll in. As things stand, a coalition of private corporations, billionaires, and wealthy spacefaring nations are primed to extend the unequal ownership structures from Earth up into space. 